Starting on the subdeck, we enter the ship through the vehicle garage, where all Anvil owners can store their ground-based vehicles like the Ursa Rover. Now, a fun feature found here is the stopping ramp for those who tend to drive up the ramp a bit faster than perhaps they should. It remains to be seen if that'll stop me from destroying the ship from within, simply trying to park or not. Now, from the garage, we find our docking collar section that's designed for the future implementation of ship-to-ship -ship docking, where it can hold EVA suits and an extendable trellis that will one day connect out with another ship and allow players to pass safely between the two. Beyond that section, we find ourselves in the three detachable cargo pods, each one capable of carrying an impressive volume of commodities. Take note of the double airlock doors that separate each one. These will be important in the future when players can drop a pod off and continue on towards another location without one. Behind the pods, we arrive in the armory, a new room and a throwback to the Carrick's history as a military vessel, complete with suit lockers, weapon racks, and all the equipment you might need before disembarking onto potentially hazardous or hostile territories. Moving up a level, we find ourselves on the habitation deck, and a place I'll probably experience most, the med bay. Now in the waiting room out here, we have some standard beds, office and utility areas off to the side, and a single medical bed that's a step up in capabilities from what you'll find on the Cutlass Red. Also on the habitation deck, you can't be a big ship in the Star Citizen universe without your mess hall. The rec room, where Anvil seems to have invented hard mode for billiards with a six-sided table, and military-style crew quarters or billets, complete with all the amenities a person could need on extended voyages like bathrooms and showers and such. On our way to the bridge, we find the captain's quarters, full of many important books that make you seem learned to your crew, as well as a hideaway television so they don't actually see what you're really doing with your time. After that, we find ourselves where all the action happens on board the Carrick, with our multi-level bridge that spans both the second and third floors. Now down below, you'll find the pilot and co-pilot stations, as well as a variety of server blades that will one day assist players with the processing of data that you collect while exploring the cosmos. Up above on the technical deck, we have the comms and remote gunner stations, our star map, and an alternate pilot station, providing greater visibility at reduced instrumentation. Also, you gotta stand there the whole time, and I don't trust anyone with a standing desk as a rule of thumb. I'm very, very pro chairs. From the bridge, we move past a couple more escape pods into the repair room, where you'll be able to service and maintain your various ship components on the extended voyages a ship like the Carrick is intended for. And then the drone room, with its two drone operator seats and the release mechanism that will jettison them into space without venting the entire room. Also on the technical deck, we find our ship hangar, capable of launching the included Anvil Pisces or anything else you find will fit. And we're not going to take that discovery away from you. If you can get it in there and close the doors above it, have at it, fellow space person. Past the hangars, we find access to the Carrick's side turrets. Now, one of the things we discovered during our Citizen Gone demo was how difficult it was to get onto your targets. So we've actually extended the distance the turrets extend out from the ship, improving the angles you can work with. At the rear of the ship, we find engineering which, like the bridge at the fore, extends between the technical deck and the habitation below it. It's here you'll find many of the ship's components like shield generators, power plants, and the like. Finally, taking one of the Carrick's many lifts or ladders up to the very top brings us to the cartography deck, which will, in the future, showcase the star system you're currently presiding in and allow an operator to plot courses and the like with a much more detailed map than you'd normally see on other ships. And for those that just need to stretch their legs, an EVA airlock that lets you escape out into space at the top of the ship, and I'm sure won't become a popular ingress target for wannabe raiders in the future. And since we're outside at this point, let's go ahead and take one more look at the Carrick exterior while we're here. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the progression of the Carrick's exterior, I'd encourage you to check out both the Citizen Con Ship Talk panel, as well as concept artist Sarah McCullough's recent appearance on Star Citizen Live to find out more. It's a good-looking ship, if I do say so myself. I'm really glad it's my favorite.